Come on. Indiana has 28 microbreweries in operation, with several more planned in the next few years. One of those breweries is the Broad Ripple Brew Pub, which boasts the unique distinction of being Indiana's first brew pub and is the oldest microbrewery operating in the state. It used to be an auto parts store. You would know by the tin ceiling the uh, owner uh, salvaged uh, the tin ceiling from a building downtown that was going to be raised. Um, and some of the other stuff, like you can look at the, at the bar, and he's kind of an architectural salvage guy. Those are six panel doors laid on their side, and you can tell like the, the posts are like a headboard if you kind of look at some stuff. So anyhow, he had a lot of character to this place, but yeah, it used to be a uh, auto parts store. Broad Ripple Brew Pub incites a certain loyalty amongst both its guests and its employees. How long have you been a customer? Oh, 15 years. 15 years. <laughs> or whatever, it's hard to say. Oh, I don't know, maybe. So I've worked here for six or seven years. I don't remember how long. It's been a long time. Uh, since 94, so 15 years. Wow. I started in 93. So what makes the beer at Broad Ripple Brew Pub unique in comparison to the beer from other microbreweries in the Indy area? So I was here last night with my kids, enjoyed the Wobbly Bob, which is an American pale ale. Uh, it's pulled on the, uh, on the hand pole. It's a traditional English method of dispensing beer. It's actually a cylinder that um, uh, pulls the, the beer, dispenses it with the piston as opposed to uh, pushing it with CO2. Uh, if you haven't been here before, some of the beer, people think the beer is under carbonated and it, uh, it is, but it's not a fault, it's by design. And how is such a unique brew made? Well, you need malted barley. Uh, the malting process creates enzymes in the husk of the grain that you, so you germinate it, you start to germinate it so it starts to grow and then you kiln it. You need those enzymes because the mash tun here, uh, there's a false bottom, it's kind of like making drip coffee. Um, you mix the grain with hot water, roughly 150 degrees, and that's when sacrification takes place and those are the enzymes, the alpha and beta amylase, um, and they convert the starch in the grain to sugar when it's cracked and they're uh, mixed together, it's called a mash. So anyhow, so then you, uh, it's in the false bottom, so you suck off the bottom uh, and rinse it, like I was saying, making your drip coffee. You rinse the grain, trying to get all the sugar out, that's called wort, W-O-R-T. You pump it into the kettle, where it's boiled. Uh, after we boil for an hour, uh, you run it through a heat exchanger, so that takes the wort, which is, you know, probably 208 degrees at that point because you've stopped boiling it. Uh, down to 70 degrees, um, where you pump it into a clean fermenter that has yeast already in it. And if you can pick this up, you can hear, uh, this is our extra special bitter, which we brewed yesterday, and it is fermenting rather vigorously. So what do the people who drink here the most drink when they're here? Probably the Evil Sizer Stout that Kevin made just recently. That is, was really a nice one. We have a springbok that I really like, and then the winter beers I really like. The dark ones, like barley wines, and there's one called Serenity Now. It wasn't even our brewer's recipe, but it was a state fair winner. It was really good. Uh, most ladies like sweet drinks, and, and um, I guess I like the more flavorful uh, or whatever. Uh, anything seasonal. <laughs> uh, you know, I've worked here so long that, um, I'm, you know, while I enjoy our flagships, I'm all about, you know, what's coming up next. And just what is coming up next at Broad Ripple Brew Pub? Stop by to find out. Who knows? After a nice cold beer or two and some pleasant conversation, Broad Ripple Brew Pub might just become your favorite new hangout. I think I'll have